Fresh cut grass. What? But I'm just a, I'm just a little boy. <laughs> In this pure, endless void of all color, you feel the psychic pulse open a flood of memories, waking to Dancer's curious smile, enjoying polishing the armor of your other automaton companions, exploring this new world with fresh eyes and protecting your friends, meeting Ashton in the depths of your despair, discovering a new family and righting wrongs, lifting the spirits of those you admire. Older memories break through. An endless cloudscape rushing past a skyline of pristine lavender spires. A parade through prismatic cobblestone streets, thousands of metallic beings cheering, celebrating. A dark room. A man you fear of short, graying blonde hair, shouting, his mouth making no words. None of this imagery makes sound, it's just visual. But you know there's anger in his heart, the intent, the defiance. A green path of flowers and stone stairs. A kindly older noblewoman greets you. You like her and your new life away from him. She sits and speaks, silence, but you, you know the words of confidence and vulnerability that she shares. You grant her perspective and encouragement and understanding. She smiles. She frowns. She is gone. At me. <laughs> Within the endless light, you feel like your very soul is pried open, memories spilling forth, gentler times of wayward romances in your youth. <laughs> Diana and her laugh, Frudel and her patience, how you filled each lonely gap with work, fixation, and even the longest of lives can extend rapidly under such pursuits. Within your belly, a hunger stirs. An itch hits your skin. An iron smell fills your nose. A howl pierces your ears. You look up to the full, glowing red moon ruidus above you. From its ruddy light streaks a single beam of pure crimson light that envelops you. You let it wash away the sadness and you give in to the beast, tearing your skin away as you feel the anxious tingle that you always feel at the zenith of this moon now grow into an uncontrollable impulse to hunt, to kill, to eat, to ruin. It sees you now, and it's found common ground. Ashton, enveloped in shadowless infinity, too bright to blink nor look away, you are a child. You are worried as, as others rush to finish something you do not understand. You do not hear, your, your elven father shouts orders without sound, pointing about excitedly. You look back to your saintly, strong mother, the fear within you growing with the tension in the air, but she touches your shoulder and kisses your head. She points ahead as the many people take their places around the vibrant, glowing gateway. Your mother steps to your father and hands him his vestments. He places leather mask and headdress upon his face, the details curving upward as if reaching for the sparking opening. It begins. Laudna. Here beyond the edge of death, the light envelops you. You remember, soundlessly, the lush forests of the Parchwood surrounding the edges of your family home. You remember the warmth of the fire under the hearth and the comfort of a stew's smell filling the air as your family gathers for dinner. Dinner. An impossibly long, decadent table. Watchful guards. The Dark Lord and Lady speaking wordlessly, and the dread that fills your heart, her gaze meets yours. A gaze that never stops. You see her at the edge of your vision always. Her shape creeps beyond every blink. Her words mingle with your own. 
You fear you may lose yourself. Are you yourself? Or just her? Incubating? I am of his blood. I will endure. My will is unrelenting. You are my vessel in life, on life, in beyond. I will endure. Imogen. Your entire body and spirit shakes into energy, a cosmic mass of vibration and power. You feel your body pulse and burn unstable and threatening to burst, wanting to explode. You wince and hold yourself with all your might, your eyes tightening shut. You are walking, toppling over a rock by a swaying tree. A hand catches your clumsy form just as it strikes the dirt. You cry loudly, silently, as your eyes meet hers. Her lavender hair tied up over her ears in a long braid. Your smile, her smile, calms your tears to a still. She wipes your cherub cheeks and lifts you into her arms. She speaks to you wordlessly. In your mind, you know everything is all right. She suddenly looks concerned. Her face snaps away into the distance. With intensity, you open your eyes once more, and there, in this vacant space crackling before you, you see Otohan staring back, her body crackling with the same type of energy as yours. You are a true predator, a gift in their image. If you can be as strong as we can, to deny your nature is to be consumed by it. To embrace it is to master your own fate. I am proud of you. The voice of Liliana echoes in your mind. Run, Imogen. What do you do? Is it too late? I try to back away. You back away, and Odahan just begins to close the gap. I turn my back and take off as fast as I can. You turn around, and she's right there in front of you, smiling. The bell tolls and looms soon enough. Come, create something beautiful with us. And she reaches out. I look up and I try to take off into the air. You look up and she's right there looking down at you. What do you do? I try to blast her face. <laughs> Okay. In that moment, you reach within you, and as the energy begins to burble up and ignite, this bright, burning, chaotic, swirling energy just begins to build up and build up as you unleash it with an immense, an immense scream. You watch her get blasted and streak away into the white. Do I know that Fern has the revivify spell? Uh, I mean, I would leave it between your discussions, uh, having how long you've traveled together and, you know, tactically sharing or not sharing what capabilities you have at your disposal. You know, she can heal people. We've also, we haven't role played taking a poop, but we all know that everybody poops, so we can have some conversations that happen. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Imogen poops, I don't want people back to life is the same. I just don't, I don't want this to be cheap, right? Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Okay. I don't have any werewolf shit, you guys. I mean, I could bite him. Bite Orum? Yeah. Make him a werewolf? Up. Well, he's dead. I'm just mean bite him. I get real nervous when people die. <laughs> Imogen, it's just your turn. Did you bring him back as a werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of these. A dead like... werewolf, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Drop it. Lana? 
I reach out with my mind? There's nothing there to reach back. I, I run out a few steps to see if I can spot her. I'm looking around everywhere. Okay, you run past Chetney off to the space, and just as you get to the edge of your movement, about there, in the rubble of one of the nearby buildings, you see a hand limply <sighs> on the outside. I'm going to take off as far as I can to, to her. Okay. I'm going to start it. pulling rubble off of her. <laughs> just slap her. Beating the shit out of pulling her. Pulling rubble <laughs> off of her and try to get her unburied. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a Ed Harris in the Abyss. You bitch! Yeah. You never gave up on anything in your life. <laughs> Such a good movie. Uh-huh. I will lean down and touch uh, Fern uh, on the side of her cheek, on, the, on her face, as gently as I can with my metal hands, and uh, I will uh, whisper in her ear. Uh, uh, please, please don't leave us. Um, and I will cast Revivify. Okay. Do you have the three hundred gold worth of diamond? I have one diamond worth three hundred gold. Alrighty. I think I would just uh, talk to her um, and tell her, uh, or t- try to in- uh, tell her spirit anyway that. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I know, I know your family has not been easy for you, but I feel like you're making a new one with us, and I, I want to help you. I, I want to help you be a, be whole again, and. And I, I think you would you would break all of our hearts by leaving. And I, I just need you to stay. I need I need you to stay. And I'll just sort of command her to stay. <laughs> That's a seven plus three. Ten is literally the difficulty Ooh. class base on this for a character who has not died. <laughs> I <laughs> hate this game. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't on that one. Fern. Uh. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. In the shadowed darkness, as you felt the world pulled from you, and whatever dark thread of the unseelie or beyond that's been haunting you through mirror upon mirror since you've come here, you feel it get its tethers in you, and you feel yourself being pulled, and just as you feel that sense of hopelessness wash over you, that light glimmers and you hear the words of fresh cut grass echo, that light becomes a tunnel, almost a ladder before you. Do you reach for it? No, (laughs) no, Well, what else is there? Do you look behind you? I'm sorry. Yeah, do you look behind you? Yeah. You look behind you, and you see a dull green sliver of a moon. You see a blackened hillscape of tangled jungle and thorns, brambles and eyes, so many wicked hungry eyes waiting for you. And behind those eyes, Darkness, uncertainty, cold oblivion. Hmm. Not quite ready for that part yet. I'll turn around and start reaching out. As you reach out and grasp what looks to be a ladder like structure, you hold on to it and it seems to pull you away. You glance back and feel the tethers tear free from you. You can almost hear the screams of disappointment and frustration in this endlessly echoing space below. As you glance back up, the ladder is no longer a ladder, but almost like a, like an arm of light pulling. And as the light rushes up towards you and your eyes are flooded, 
you begin to focus once more as you blink, and the hand of light is now a hand of metal. And you glance up into the face of fresh cut grass, who is pulling you from the ground. I'll stay. Jeez Louise, calm down. Oh boy. Turn. Hi. Thanks for doing that. That sure. was really, really nice. Here. How's everybody doing? Real bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get up and dust off a little bit. Well, I'm so. dead, and you have uh, 16 seconds to save his life. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, four, no, six times six is 30, 36 seconds. Right? No, how many rounds we got this? Stop Maybe trying five? to put a number on it. 30 seconds left. <laughs> yeah. we, got 30 30, we have 30 seconds, seconds left. Is, oh my god. Anyway. Wait, what do you mean? 30 that, seconds? That finishes that round. You, you got 24 seconds to save his life. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the next round, Ashton. To save the world. Um, <laughs> you just don't realize you have them on you, because maybe you didn't write it down. But somebody took those diamonds. I feel like I took the diamonds. I genuinely don't I remember. I trust the person who would have taken them to know whether or not they took them. Yeah, so. I don't feel like I did. <sighs> Maybe we gave them to FCG. Somebody took them. Give me a fucking plastic tissue. Oh, sorry, I forgot what I was doing. I mean, I didn't, but I forgot I had to roll my Has a smaller, like there's a th there's a thick wall to it, like it's protecting what's inside, or at least is there's a heavy buffer. The actual space within it is about that fucking bitch. Oh god! She stole my coin, didn't she? Okay. I'm gonna kneel down. Mm. I'm gonna go to Lodna. Sort of push her hair to the side. We'll find a way back for you, my friends. <gasps> Sorry, I, this is. I don't know what to do. It, it's the coin's fault. You can. We can be mad at the change bringer later. <sighs> oh, I don't like how this is making me feel. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I'll go to Orem. I'm just gonna gather him up. Friend, um, can you please come back? Because I'm getting a little scared. And we need we need your help because we can't do this just by ourselves. Okay. <sighs> Seventeen. Seventeen? Yeah. Okay. You expend the spell's energy. Place your hand upon Orm's cold body. Orm. The tension has passed and a calm peace comes over you. There's this shadow, this looming darkness of regret and anxiety gives way to the sounds of the soft breeze of Zephyr, of Zephyr, the tree. And you feel the presence you've missed for a bit as you turn from the shadow, amongst the various cherry blossom 
branches and the wind that blows and this kind of soft dreamscape before you. You see Will. Nothing more than to stay here. And in that moment of relinquishing to whatever the next life may be, you hear Fern's words echo out from above. The soft dream begins to fade a moment, and you glance up into a shaft of light. And her words call out to you. And you're torn. You look back down to Will, who looks back at you. And as his voice echoes, you're not done. I really wish I could stay. I'll still be here. Oh, I miss you so bad. There will be a time. I look forward to it. Say hi to Derek for me. Say hi to Dad. He reaches out and embraces you. Like a hot spring that just envelops you. You feel the warmth and light of a connection you've missed for so long. How? Go. And he throws you up towards the shaft of light. As you drift upward, you watch the tree begin to fade. You see his face begin to fade. And you feel the sting of dust and sand against your cheek. You blink and squint and come to focus. And as you look right up into the face of Fern, upside down above you, tears streaming down her face. Maybe we can pray to Ladna's god, and she'll bring her back. And then I can bring back Gorham. You uh, know. Flip the coin. Oh, do you want to? Do you want to choose which one's Ladna, Imogen? I don't. I. I don't get to go. You. You don't. Okay. 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 This is me. This is on me. Give me the coin. Okay. I'm gonna send a message to Delilah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you send that fucking message first. Do I have a message? I have a third spell left. I wanna send a message to Delilah, but it's not my fucking turn in the initiative. Oh, yeah. Oh no, Marisha! I told you it's time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I flip a coin or do you guys roll these? Sure. I appreciate that on Laura's notepad, the whole page just reads Ladna is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, technically, it technically says Lana is dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a note. Oh, Lana no. is dead. There's not. Is there at least a smile? A, a sad. Like, Lana is dirt. Lana is dirt. 
That's it. Laudna is dead. She <laughs> is. Good episode title. <laughs> <laughs> Something Fuck. metal will trigger it. Yeah. Good thing. I'm a master of wood. <laughs> What you gonna do, Jenny? <laughs> tell me, tell me how in this moment your wit specialty becomes the heroic point. <laughs> Check for a cock ring of revivify. Yep. I give, I give a full, full like, I never told anyone about that thing. I don't know. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, <laughs> after a, a got three of them lined up, just in case. Three of them. Uh, resting. I'm, I'm just wa I'm watching though. Chetney the whole time. I'm resting. I just got my blade out, just spinning it and looking at him. All he sleeps, remembering how we started this day. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, Faintest of butterflies that just continue to turn in your stomach. Yes, I feel that right now. I feel yeah. it. Yeah. So go ahead and look at your feet. My feet? Yeah. Ooh. What? You did that Sneaky. fucking shit. What? Did you do? what? How? Sneaky. With D and D, Bill. Yes. I want to talk to you about what happened yesterday. Huh? When I was feeling weird and you came and hit me. Mm hmm. Thank you. Thank you for trying to reach out and and I'm so sorry for what I did to you. And now more than ever we need to stick together. I'm sorry about that. Oh well, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much about it. It just kind of seemed like you needed to let off some steam or something. I shouldn't have taken it out on you, and I know that I said some things, and I shouldn't have to all of you. So I, I stayed up during the night to make you this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a toolbox for your wooden tools. Oh, oh no! And look at the front. Oh. <laughs> I used my blade to carve it during the night. It, it's not as fine workmanship as you. But, no, it's not. <laughs> but I thought that you might like it. How? How? Oh, I love it. I love it so much. God, it's awful. I love it. <laughs> All of you mean so much to me. And I'm sorry that I did that to you. And for Laudna's sake, we got to stick together and be honest with each other. And not hide money from each other. You know, just in general, it's a general comment, yeah. not directed at anyone. FCG, this is so great. And can I just say, it's not all bad what happened yesterday. I am actually encouraged by what I saw you throw down with. That's the shit I'm talking about. So if you need to let that out every once in a while, on our enemies, fully encourage it. Just on our enemies. Because when your eyes go red, that's some crazy shit. But I'm here for it. Well, it sounds like I'm not the only one who has some dark powers hidden within. Odahan was there and... She was super into you. And then she just wasn't. Did anyone see what happened to her? I... I, I hit her. And then when we came back to the the city, she just was gone. Came back? Where'd you mm. go? I don't know. Everything was white. Everything was stormy. Everything was just gone. She was. She just wanted you. She didn't want us. Clearly. But I'm sorry. I ran. Yeah, Why did ran. she want you? I assume because uh, we have similar sort of abilities. I mean, did, did she talk to any of y'all in your mind as well? No. Maybe. No. Yeah, she did to you. Oh, well, she reached into my mind. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, 
white flash, well, that white flash was weird. So I'm gonna say is that white flash was kind of weird. I've never had anything like that happen. I, I, I mean, that was more. I didn't think I was capable of it. I, well, you've never removed a city block before. Not to my knowledge. I also, in that moment, it's like I saw my mother. And as far as I know, she, she, she was gone from the day I was born. I don't, I don't remember her in my childhood. And she was there. She was there. What do you, wait, what do you mean? Like, at, at I the saw, end of I saw into my memories, I saw I saw my mother before she left. I think she was really powerful. I... She was still talking to me. Your mom? Yeah. Did Odahan talk to you in this? I mean, she was trying, but, but my, my mother was still telling me to get away from her. And just to be 100% clear, your mom in this vision was not Odahan, right? No. Like you're not, she's not the same person, no, two different. Not. <laughs> okay. And your mom's told you to run before? Every dream. My mother always tells me to run away from the storm. Are you sure she's saying that you should run away from the storm and it's not that you should run away? Wait, huh? What's the difference? Well, the storm would be the thing that's dangerous. What if, sorry, what if you're the thing that's dangerous? You did make some pretty big boom. Well, how could she run away from herself? I mean, if you ever, I'm just saying, if I ever rev removed a city block and the people <laughs> around me were hurt, I think they'd probably be scared. And didn't you say your dad always kept a distance? Yeah, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you. I'm not either. I fuck with you big time, but like, <laughs> Did anyone else see anything? See anything? I, like visions or something? I, yeah, did anyone else see anything? I mean, I saw some old, some old flings. Oh yeah, oh yeah, when, when she went off, I saw some stuff too. You did? Me too. Mm -hmm. Another land and lots of automatons and a man who was mean and a woman who was nice, and I don't know where it was or who those people were, but. Automatons like you or like oatmeal? No, like me. Well. I saw my parents. Your parents? Yeah. Aren't you an orphan? I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds to work that out. <laughs> <laughs> so you do have parents. <laughs> Five. But, you did, but I, I didn't know if you ever knew what they looked like or saw them. I don't. But then how did you know that they were them? I do. You just know. I, you just it's, know. A, it's a dim memory that, you know, that was just suddenly really fucking clear. Do you want to tell us what they looked like? <sighs> No. <laughs> they were, uh, actually, I've been meaning to ask, did that helmet, that, the helmet, the armor and the helmet is exactly what I think it is. Mm. is the, okay. Is that like, hmm. They were football players. Uh, <laughs> is, it the, is it the armor that you took? The helmet that I, yeah, it was the stuff we saw in the museum. I'm using why it was, did something. The and, helmet that you took? You remember he took the armor in the, in the museum? In that he museum took some and stuff from the museum. I pull out. Did you Why was it there? I'd pull out the helmet that I stole from the museum. It was some sort of ritual, I guess. I don't know. They, they were doing were do something. And uh, I think my mother said, I believe, I think it was my mother said, it, it began, began. And then, and then I, I woke up and had it to. It began. I don't know. This is it. 
this fucking thing is it. It's what I fucking got. Is that helmet or armor arm somewhere that you recognize or the people what or did it say in the museum where where it was from? <sighs> Do we remember? Did you write it down? I I did, and it's a, it's a... It sounded like a shari, but it wasn't a shari. Yeah. That's right. A shari. A shari. Which, while the the term, like, the language base is similar, it isn't a shari-based. It is more elemental-based. It's what the oh. kind of secondary portion of the word is derived from. What if you put it on? I'm Probably. not putting it fucking on. Okay. Well, but I mean, what if... <laughs> What if it's like a lock and a key? Like, what if you put it on and you grow wings or some shit? Yeah. I throw it to you. Well, you me. figure it out. You can see that kind of. It is a a cured leather mask and headband combination where the there are these kind of leather tendrils that curl up almost like a living flame in the back that kind of weave and pull upward. There is a sculpted heavy brow that pulls across the nose. It looks like it's a ceremonial dress more than it is an armor. It also looks slightly damaged. The helmet or the headpiece? Mm -hmm. Can I do that? I was working out the courage to talk to you, Orm, and I, because I, I don't know. I thought maybe, I don't know. I thought maybe you would know what the fuck it is. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. You know, it would have, would have triggered any kind of knowledge or memory I had when I saw the first time. Well, you've heard about it once, the Hishari village. It, it's kind of. <laughs> At least in Ashari terms, it's used as a kind of a, a tale to spook people from toying with the elements if they don't know what they're doing. You don't know much beyond that. You, you know that it was a it was a group of people that delved into things they didn't fully understand or knew how to control. But it's somehow connected to my people, or? Only in the sense that the Ashari are, are considered and long historically guardians of the elements within Exandria, both both control and uncontrollable. What the Ashari village did um, was reckless, and they paid for it. That's basically what you know. Okay, I'll share that little dribble of info. Yeah, that was a it was a memory of the last day I spent with my parents. Too young to remember, and uh, I remember vaguely watching everything fucking go, everything to just rip apart. What do you mean? Metaphorically, physically, what do you mean? Oh, wind and light and air and people flinging through the air, cracking and breaking, and... Uh, this is your last memory of your parents? Yeah, I woke up uh, wandering the uh, <coughs> deadlands outside the city. After however long they fucking found me, put me in the Graymore home. So there was a cataclysmic event with your parents, and elemental forces? I, I don't know. I remember them saying, it begins. I remembered it today, yesterday. Imogen, did you see any of this in us while we were seeing these things? I know you saw some weird shit in my head. Well, in the past, but yesterday, no, there was, there was just the storm. So, you, you, prior to that moment, when you had that memory, you didn't remember it before then? It was vague. Okay. It was not, there were not faces I could pull together, not words I could really put together, just flashes of something. It was a very long time ago, and I was a very different person. And a lot had happened since then. And uh, it's not really the sort of thing one really wants to dwell on as much as possible. Plenty of other awful fucking things to dwell on. I'll tell you what I know. Uh, I don't have a lot of answers, but but this school woman is playing a long game, and whatever she's interested in with you, she's not going to stop. These are the people who attacked my home. 
and took my family from me. And that was six years ago. And they seem a lot further into whatever plans they have. So if she's willing to play, uh, willing to play whatever game they're playing for years, then she's not done with you. I know. So there's no point sitting around wondering. We need to get help for Ladna, I hope. And then we gotta find this woman and stop her. I've been doing the messages, I just wanted to hand FCG this. Use the paints from Imahara gel. Just in case you start feeling wild again, I just thought maybe we could craft something that could, you know, help you describe your emotions. So, you know, if you're feeling happy, you could just leave this up. Or maybe if you're like, ah, I'm gonna bust on you, you can do this. And maybe we could just mount it to your chest or something. And, like an you know, that's for rebooting. <laughs> like an emotional keep it thermometer. real simple. Isn't it so cute? <laughs> it's real smooth. The paint is slightly corrosive, oh, so just be careful. <laughs> Why is the paint corrosive? I think it's meant for metal, but it's really burning the fuck out of my skin. My fingernail, my prints are all gone. <laughs> See, I'll So, you know. I love it. Oh, it's real cute. I like Here. the suave one over yeah. there. Yeah, that's if you want to get your freak on. You can just walk around and kind of like let people know, hey, it's time if you're interested. Just put the vibe out with the arrow. That's you. I'm very happy right now. Mm -hmm. Content? <laughs> you can't tell because my face can't make emotional <laughs> movement. This one could That's... be unsure or you got a dookie. <laughs> Nine o'clock is just Marisha. <laughs> 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 Thank you for what you said. Thank you for this emotional clock. Thanks for my toolbox. My amateurishly made toolbox. I did the best I could. I have a very large it's okay. bus saw. It's not a fine cutting. I understand. It's no, like it's the got drip, a wild drip stain is particularly it. horrifying, but you know. <laughs> I, I had to sca I salvaged place. what I could from I Joe's while he was asleep. We've got a long We've trip gone. ahead of us. Maybe we'll refine new skills. I have to be able to pass on my craft to someone. You could be my legacy. Is there one here that eye rolls? <laughs> Somebody's gonna loot one of their bodies one day and be so disappointed. <laughs> Fuck. That's... I mean, it would be amazing if he could pass on his legacy to you because you won't ever die. Didn't you ask oh. to be taught by him? I... Oh. Well... Mm. I'm not gonna die. I don't know. I don't know if that's in the cards I mean, for I me. I just <laughs> did, so... We all die at some point. No, I'm actually not as old as I would work. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> there goes the emotion. Don't panic. Don't panic. You're on the house. Give him some room. Give him some room. He's going to kill all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Doomsday clock is a concern. I'm killing everything. It's a concern. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, damn, what, what? On the run. Is there a ladder drop down? Well, as it begins to push down, you can see off both sides two rope ladders begin run to grab them, Run and grab them. Run and run and grab them. Can you? Just through the street, you can see it's having a hard time. They're, they're the not pre precise uh, vehicles. And as it kind of pushes through around, you see one of the rope ladders kind of like it's snagged on the edge of a roof before, like, about ten feet of it, ten feet off, oh, geez, and it's starting so to loosen a little bit. But it's pushing through kind of the outside of the skids, which is the best, you know, possible position you have here before it starts to get into the higher buildings outside of the Carmine Wall. They're out of town, I guess. <laughs> this was yeah. not well thought. But yeah, we're trying to it. run yeah. and grab so onto right. the rope so we can land. lift up. Yeah. All right, so you all rush off and try and begin to leap for this. As you all begin to leap and climb and hold on, and it's like the rope itself is swinging left and right. At one point, it kind of like slams into the side of Ashton's hip, and it. <gasps> Hurts, <laughs> shattering the corner of this roof off, and you're like, oh, the white searing pain for a moment before Drop you just hold on a clutch. You almost lose your grip, rock and roll, and you full on miss the ladder. Oh no, a bit of it. And as you go downward, suddenly you're about to hit the ground, 
and then you just coast along the ground. What? What? What is this? Devilry! You glance up and you can see hand extended at the top of the ladder. Imogen looking down at you. He's starting to believe. Are you doing this or am I? <laughs> I try to go up. Alrighty. Pulling up. You coast up alongside the edge of this rope ladder. I just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> up in the way, you coast past the sails. And as you tear up past, you can see now on the deck, half the crew there waiting, and Captain Zandis, they're sitting there with their arms on the sides of the the the, the wheel for the for the actual skyship. Kind of shout out. <laughs> There's some way to do it. Um, <laughs> the rest of you, as the ship begins to pull up and pull up, you can now see the crawlers are now following it in tow, and you hear. Oh no! Let's get the fuck out of here. At us. Rifles firing. Oh no! But the skyship is a little too quick. And a little too far out of the range to make any sort of impact. Well, you do hear a few of the bullets make their mark on the bottom of the wooden hull, but it's a strong hull. And as it pulls up over the city, pushing through the pillars of the smokestacks of the various cisterns that climb out of the top of the city, it turns to the left and begins pushing in a northward direction, taking you back out over the belly of the Hellcatch Valley, onward to your destination back. To where this all began, the city of Drusar. 